of the whole world are upon England and its people. The Spitfire is a real thoroughbred, a sports car amongst aeroplanes. Upon the men of the Royal Air Force, soldiers with wings. It was delightful, delightful, wonderful experience. The Spitfire was supremely good at doing the job for which it was designed. The Spitfire, perhaps the most famous RAF plane of the Second World War. RJ Mitchell's groundbreaking design, the Mark I, first rolled off the Supermarine assembly line in 1938. Its distinctive thin elliptical wings, Rolls-Royce Merlin engine, all metal construction and ferocious firepower made it the cutting edge fighter of the day. And it proved more than a match against the German Luftwaffe. The Spitfire is a terrific fighter. A brand new design, quite different from anything that had gone previously, all metal construction, semi-monocoque, which means that the outer fra the panels give as much strength as any framework underneath. Brilliant aeroplane, delight to fly, and it did the business. The Spitfire's groundbreaking design was a winning combination of firepower, speed and manoeuvrability. Eight Browning 303 machine guns were harmonised to deliver 160 rounds a second. It could reach 350 miles per hour, but some had a booster to increase it by up to 34 miles per hour for five critical minutes. Its controversial and unique elliptical shaped wings made it the most agile fighter in the sky. And the plane's distinctive sound came from its powerful 1,130 horsepower Merlin engine. No pilot will commit to battle if he can't rely on his engine, and pilots could rely on the Rolls-Royce Merlin. On the side of the cowling, we can see the exhaust manifold, and they again play a part in the design because some of the thrust from the exhaust added to the aircraft's performance. So a clever bit of design, attention to detail, making sure that even the exhaust was powering the aircraft. Deep, resonant, uh, and it's absolutely unmistakable. You can always hear a Spitfire when it's coming into your bit of airspace. The wing is really what gives the Spitfire its DNA, if you like, its performance. What they wanted to do was to produce a wing which would generate a lot of lift, but have very low drag. So it had to be very thin in section. And the Spitfire wing is so thin that you could almost cut yourself on the wingtips. It just really does the job. Pilots loved flying it. In an interview shortly before he died, Tom Neal recalled his first flight. It was delightful, delightful, wonderful experience. I was only given quarter of an hour for the to fly, and we were told how to land it and the manner in which we did it. Always looking over your nose to the left, and I landed on grass, no problem at all. It's kid stuff, absolutely. But it didn't remain kid stuff for long. Target London was the single order for Goering's pilots. And save the whole world from a cruel domination was the order to the airmen of England. During the Battle of Britain, he came up against the Messerschmitt BF 109. But they had uh, 300 rounds per gun, or 14.7 seconds. So you could fire your guns in a single burst, and you had 14 seconds. Otherwise, you tended to fire two-second burst or three-second burst. It's just that it, firing it was difficult business, particularly firing other than dead astern. You, usually, the only time you succeeded in war was to get almost within touching distance of the enemy aircraft and then fire, close your eyes and fire. Not quite like that, but you had to get very close. On September 15, 1940, when even their friends had proclaimed the immediate collapse of the British, the young fighting men of Britain's Royal Air Force tore down out of the sky 185 enemy aircraft, and the German invasion forces were held up on the coast of France. Attacking You saw the enemy, you dived at him, you shot at him, you broke away, and he, you couldn't see him again. And similarly, they saw you, attacked you, 
dived away or climbed away, and that was the end of it. It's the Spitfire which had the reputation, and the German pilot who was shot down wanted to know, was it a Spitfire? There was no shame in being shot down by a Spitfire. The men of the Fighter Command taking to the skies are proving to all the world not only that their equipment is unsurpassed in speed and maneuverability, but that the British flyer is superior to his Nazi enemy in skill, daring and experience. It had the performance. It was a match for the opposition, the Messerschmitt BF 109, and uh, at times could be said to outclass it. So it was an aircraft which did the job which it was designed for, did it supremely well, but it was also a very forgiving, almost vice-free aeroplane. Pilots love it. Spitfire pilot is kind of a breed apart. Spitfire pilots knew that they were flying the latest, the fastest, the most modern, the most up-to-date of the fighting aeroplane. Uh, and that's kind of reflected in their attitude. They also knew that they had the best, a Rolls-Royce engine Spitfire. You can't beat that. And that gave them not only tremendous confidence, but also the ability to do the job they had to do. The daring and bravery of RAF aces like Tom, who was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross during the battle, saved Britain from Nazi tyranny. Winston Churchill alluded to Shakespeare's Henry V when he described them as the few. As a result of what we did in the battle, I always have felt, even from day one, that we did something special and that we would eventually be numbered in the arch uh, alongside the archers at Agincourt and famous people over the ages and the people who fought in the Battle of Trafalgar and so on. We were rather special. <laughs>